Well, when am I ever going to use this in my real life anyway? If you're a math teacher, and I have a good feeling that most of you probably are, uh, this is one of the million dollar questions of our profession, right? I mean, whether students are, are, are in class taking a quiz and you hear them mutter it under their breath, or whether they are in the middle of a perfectly decent lesson and students blurt out the question right in the middle of a lesson, or maybe they're talking with other students justifying why they didn't do their homework. You know a lot of them, even if they're not saying it, they're probably thinking it. When am I ever going to use this in my real life anyway? Well, today, I'm glad you're here. Uh, we want to take a chance and try to unpack this question a little bit. Since it's a million dollar question for mathematics and teachers uh, across, the, across the world, probably, we thought we'd take some time and reflect, well, why, why do students ask this question in math? Why does it come up more in math than it seems like other subjects? What students do ask this question and, and why? And, and what are some different responses that we can answer to students to try and justify, well, why, why do we learn the things we learn in mathematics anyway? So that's kind of our goal. Uh, our goal today is, is to do that. Um, so quick introductions. Uh, my name is Adam Petzl. I work at the University of Illinois uh, with pre-service math teachers uh, there. I taught for 10 years at Champaign Central High School uh, prior to that. And I'm Matt Hopkins, and I, I started working with Adam at Central High School, and I'm now in my eighth year teaching mathematics there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I thought to kick off this presentation, I wanted to show you a graph I found on the internet. I'd like to get your opinions on this graph here. All right. So here we got a graph. We'll take a look at it. This graph uh, is titled, The Use of Math in the Real World Versus When You Learned It. And uh, I bet you that the, the person who made this graph, I bet you that they were one of those million dollar question askers in their classroom. That they were the type of student that they were blurting that out pretty regularly in their classroom. And I can tell, because there's some things about this graph, I looked at it and I thought, oh my goodness, look at this. Do you see his x-axis? Look at this. He goes from first to third, two grades, and then, I mean, then he jumps three grades to six. Obviously, man, what's happening? Look at the y-axis scale. I mean, every day and all the time. What kind of, what kind of, and then, and then it was getting me here. I'm thinking, okay, so we see the graph going down, and then he says at 10th grade, there's a 0% probability. I mean, come on, there's at least be a horizontal asymptote there, right? I mean, the graph would at least have to curve over and keep going, because the probability of zero, I mean, there's got to be something. And, and so, so I saw the graph, and it's kind of fun to, 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 to show my math superiority and, and over this, obviously, you know, this, the students. But then I stop and I think, this, this is a powerful graph here. Uh, graphs tell a story, and this graph tells a powerful story about how I think a lot of people uh, feel about mathematics uh, <laughs> around the world, around our country, in our classrooms. And so I want to stop and think about, well, is there some truth in this graph, first of all? Well, let me think. You know, early on in the grades, okay, addition, subtraction, mental math, sure, percent, get up here, percents, and fractions, things, sure, averages, means, basic statistics, yeah, that's good. You know, some basic geometry, it's good. And 10th grade, let's, let's think about it. We start getting some geometry in 10th grade, such as, you know, the angle formed by two secants that, that intersect a circle is half the difference of the two arcs. I always forget that one anyway. And, you know, the quadratic formula. And I think if we're honest, we use the quadratic formula, but probably not many other people use it in their real life. And so there's a notion that there's some truth in this. I'm not saying that people won't, because people may, right? It depends what career they go into and what field they go into. And people may use it. But I do think the probability of them using it definitely drops off pretty fast, like this graph is saying. So I have a challenge for us today. Our challenge is this. Our challenge is to say, well, if there is some truth in this graph, that a lot of the math that we end up teaching students, they're really probably not going to actually use that specifically in their real life, then why are we teaching it? What else does math have to offer besides the specific content? Because the content's good, and some students will use that content. They're going to go on to be engineers and scientists and things, and that will be very important to them. But for a larger percentage of students, is there something besides the content that they can grab onto and believe that they're getting something out of math class other than factoring a trinomial, other than finding a vertical asymptote on a, on a rational function graph? What else does math have to do? So that's our challenge today. Now, the precursor to the to presentation is also this, um, a little distinction. Sometimes we do disservice to math when we try and tell our students that they might use things in their real life when, they, when, they, when they're probably not. For example, we could pose a problem like this and say, well, of course you're going to use things in your real life. I mean, look at a problem like this. You've got a ladder, you lean it against the wall, there's a 30 degree angle. You know, I mean, we've got to figure out how far the ladder is away from the thing, right? And this is a real life problem. That's what we say, it's a real life problem. <laughs> kind of. Uh, I don't know about you, but usually I just lean the ladder against the wall and got the extension part there and it always works out. I've never had to actually figure that out. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I think contextual, contextualizing mathematics is important. We want context for mathematics. And the more things that we can build math into the real world, I'm all for. In fact, some curriculums do that great and wonderful. 
But my notion today is for this presentation is the assumption that if we're trying to convince our students that everything they learn is going to be done in their real life somewhere, it's a losing battle. We don't want to fight that battle. We're going to lose. That graph explains it. We're going to lose. So again, the question of the presentation is what else does math have to offer? What else can we convince students with that they can take away from math course? And how can we emphasize as teachers these things in our course so they believe a little stronger that math is useful for them for some, for some reason, even if they don't believe they're going to use it in the future in their real life. Now, part of the presentation as well, the goal is, is, is that's a big thing. The other part is to have a little fun today. So we're going we're gonna to role play a series of, of some very serious, some very off the wall, so, some ways of responding to this question that you probably don't want to use in the classroom, but we're going to have some fun today anyway uh, with some possible answers here. And here's how it's going to work. Here's how it's going to work. Um, I'm going to put up a practice scenario on the board. And I'm going to role play, and Matt's going to be, Matt and I are co-teaching here. Uh, so we're going to role play some scenarios where, for example, I'm going to start being a teacher. I'm going to say, our job today is we're going to solve this quadratic, quadratic equation for zero. And then somewhere during that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, advance the slide, and their number is going to pop up. Okay? Who's 29? All right. All right. So if your number pops up, if your Matt is that, if your number pops up, um, then basically you get to be the million-dollar question asker. So if I'm in the middle of my teaching, I want you to be that rude student, and I want you to blurt out as loud as you want. This is so stupid. When would I ever need to know that? Wow, that was impressive. <laughs> that was good. That was very good. And so, so after that. I'm going to launch, and Matt and I are going to launch into a role-playing scenario of, of one way of answering that question to the class. Now, I'm not going to, and again, I'm not going to talk about quadratic functions. Like I said, I'm not going to try and fight that battle. I'm going to try and give some other things outside of the realm of quadratic functions of how to answer that. Matt, is that your Mountain Dew? It is mine. Can I have a sip? I, I, I forgot to get, I need a quick drink here. All right, some caffeine before we start. All right, so everyone got your number? Did everyone, did everyone get a number? <laughs> you don't really need caffeine, I think. I think I do. Okay. <laughs> Some of these scenarios are a bit off the wall. All right. So, uh, does everybody have a number? Yeah? Okay. And then, I oh, need a number? All right. Can you give that to him, Matt? Yep. Okay. And then, to explain the transition here, is after we go through an answer, after we go through an answer, we get this slide here. I'm going to try this on. So, this is, this, is the end, this is the end of an answer. Okay. So, when we get to that slide there, at the end of an answer, we're going to reset the class and begin anew each time. We've got 14 answers to the question. So buckle your seatbelts. We'll give this a shot here. All right, so let's start. You guys ready? Yeah. Yeah, you ready? Yeah. All right, good. OK. Oh, and, oh, oh, I forgot. And there's a couple soaps in, this, in the presentation. If you see a soap, that's a time for our soapbox. We're going to get on a soapbox and, and preach a little bit. So it's going to be good. OK, so now we're really going to start. 